Welcome back. Today I want to talk about an infrequently asked question. It should be asked more and it should be addressed more and it should be less ignored. Barrel life. What exactly is barrel life? Well, if you've got a gun that's capable of shooting half-inch groups that suddenly starts shooting one-inch groups or one-and-a-half-inch groups with the same ammunition under the same conditions, your barrel is dying. And it will die very, very quickly from that point on because of the reasons that I'll explain to you. And how long does a barrel uh, last? Well, that depends entirely on you right from the get-go, and that, I'll explain that also. First of all, barrel life is sometimes referred to as barrel wear, which is a misnomer. Barrels don't wear out so much as they burn out. Burning out of a barrel is the more, that's, that's the more appropriate term. Barrels die for three primary reasons and one secondary reason. The first primary reason is heat. The second primary reason is erosion and the third is, in a distant third, is friction. The, the secondary exacerbating uh, issue is pressure, internal cartridge pressure. That magnifies all the other, all the other causes. Now, first of all, what heat does is, very simply, it breaks the steel down. It softens it by, by superheating it, just as a blacksmith will, uh, you know, superheat his uh, iron, and then he's able to forge it over, a, over an anvil. You know, the superheating of the steel right directly in front of the chamber, that's where it becomes hot, is right directly in front of that, in front of that chamber, the, the region we call the throat of the chamber, where the lead of the rifling, where the tapered ramps of the rifling start. That's the most intensely heated area. As that area is heated, the metal becomes softer, but it also starts breaking down the various molecular uh, components, you know, the, the various alloys. You've got chromium in there, you've got molybdenum in there, and you've got other alloys in the steel which work to uh, harden it and make it a, a, a good gun steel. As you, as you uh, superheat the barrel, it starts affecting those the, those uh, molecules and basically if you overheat it those molecules will start to uh, interact and do things they're not supposed to do and they basically they'll burn off. What happens when that occurs is it creates fissures. The fissures occur uh, earliest in the most susceptible, the most vulnerable spot which is those peaks of the rifling where the, where the rifling stands high of the uh, base of the barrel. And, you know, they're, they're basically they're, they're subject to being heated up and they can't, the, the, the surrounding metal really uh, doesn't act well as a heat sink because as the ambient temperature is around them, it's, it's superheated on three sides and that, that rifling will eventually start to create uh, fissures in it just like old uh, mortared bricks and then they start, you know, flecking off and that's occur that occurs through the erosion process. The erosion process is where all the particles of burning powder are smacking into it at super high velocity and in intense heat and at the same time it's, it's, it's like a sandblasting machine. So everything is working against that poor rifling that's just sitting up there, you know, waiting to get clobbered. So the heat and the erosion are the two primary uh, issues. The third friction was found by Lyman many years ago and they wrote about it that it's almost a it's, it's almost an insignificant issue because by the time friction has anything to do with uh, wearing out the uh, length of the barrel tube in front of the in front of the rifling the throat is already gone anyway so it really doesn't make any difference your barrel is already long gone and that that's that's the finding with uh, military uh, machine gun barrels when I was in Vietnam you know we'd take our you know, load up our M151A1 Jeep, you know, in the, uh, in the morning, and I'd mount a uh, M60 machine gun on the hood with its bipod and everything, we'd go afield, but we always had a second barrel with us that we could change out if we get into a situation. And that's simply because we could cause that barrel in, in no time at all, we could fry that barrel and need to, need to replace it. So, 
that's what happens when that's what happens when you have a rifle barrel which uh, is allowed to uh, become superheated. Selection, you know, how long a barrel lives totally dependent upon you. When you decide to pick out a cartridge from the before you even buy the gun, examine for yourself what it is that you're realistically going to need and weigh that against the life of your expected uh, life of the barrel. Very simply put, a 22 Hornet is going to last a lot longer than a 222 Remington, which will last a lot longer than a, two, a 22 250. That's just the way it works because each one has progressively more powder going down the same barrel diameter with behind the same bullet diameter and that's subjecting it to increasingly more heat and subjecting it to increasingly more powder being blasted against that, uh, that lead, against the throat. So select your cartridges wisely and don't just pick them out because they're the fastest on the block. Velocity comes at a price. That's the thing you always have to keep in mind. Velocity comes at a price. The, the price is the, the, loss, the, the loss of your barrel. How long the barrel lasts is entirely dependent upon all the factors that attain to that heating process. So the selection of the cartridge that you uh, determine right from the very beginning, then the manner that you use it, um, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if a, if a barrel has a projected life of 2,000 rounds, that every time you fire it, you're taking one of those rounds away. The same as we, we all have, we, have, we all are assigned so many days of our life, and every day that we live is one day closer to the end. That's just the simple way it works. So every time you fire your gun, that's one less that you'll get to fire in the end. And how you fire the gun is uh, entirely uh, dependent upon your courtesy toward it. A gun barrel which is allowed to cool off uh, as, as much as possible between shots will last a lot longer than a barrel which is abused by repeatedly firing it, re reloading it, and repeatedly firing, which is what I've seen very frequently. Not, not infrequently, including just the other day, I've seen people bring, you know, an ammo can like this to the range and unleash hell with it and with their 223 and they'll fire one barrage of 30 round magazines after another after another after another and I can see I can see the steel the the air around the steel is all mirage that is an abused barrel and that barrel is going to wear out very very quickly it's not going to last as long if if that barrel had say that I'm not I'm not giving any numbers because these are totally subjective issues but if the barrel had a, a, a good life of 2500 rounds using it in that manner can easily reduce it to one-third of that lifetime it's quite possible and I'm, I'm going to stand on this. It's quite possible for a person to completely burn out a, a 223 barrel in as little as a thousand rounds. That's that's something can be easily done if it's if it's super fired. If it's if 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 it's fired, you know, with your friends Willie and Nilly. You've got to be very very courte courteous to your barrel. You know, treat it treat it with care, and it'll last a lot longer. There's a particular zest for cartridges that have these uh, incredibly high velocities. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to just ignore the fact that some people are, you know, desiring to buy things like the, the 26 Nosler and stuff like that, and then wondering if they, if, how much barrel life they're going to have. Not much. Not much. Let's take, for instance, the example of the 264 Winchester Magnum, which uses the same diameter bullet and the same range of bullets, you know, all the way up to 140 grains or more. Um, the 264 uses powder charges somewhere between like 57 to maybe 62, 63 grains of powder. And it had a reputation, it gained a reputation 
uh, back in the 70s as being a, a pretty quick barrel burner. Um, and just the same as with so many other things, you know, it, it, it was always dependent upon the person's use of the gun. But it, it, got, a, it got a bad reputation for burning barrels out that, uh, that basically has, has killed it off. There's, most companies now only offer one bullet uh, offering for it. And uh, it's, it's surviving by, by its fingernails. Well, I said that that, that cartridge is roughly a 60 grain powder charge with, with uh, average bullet weights. The 26 Nosler has 20 to 25 grains additional powder. Think of that. If the 264 Winchester Magnum got a bad reputation for barrel wear, just think what the, and, and also too having to have a 26 inch barrel in order to burn all that powder all the, or didn't have any velocity, what, is the, what does the 26 Nosler do? I mean, I'm just going to leave that up to your imagination. So, we could be talking about a barrel that has a lifetime that could be exhausted by the time you even find a decent load for it. That's how, that's how bad some of these barrels can work. Some of these large diameter cartridges that are out there now with small diameter bores, those are two issues right there that can cause uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, barrel loss. Let me explain here. Here's a 458 Winchester Magnum and it's just a straight wall case uh, and it has, it has virtually no uh, taper to it whatsoever. It's, it's not much different than a 4570 design uh, in terms of its, uh, in terms of its uh, straightness. A barrel, a barrel that shoots this cartridge here, I mean provided you want to stand and shoot it all the time, uh, that, that barrel can virtually last forever because uh, there's, there's, you know, there's no resistance to that bullet going down the barrel. There's no, there's no uh, excessive resistance at the, at the uh, throat here. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very straight tube. On the other hand, you take a cartridge which has the same diameter case head, and this is a 300 Winchester Magnum. Now, this cartridge is not going to last, as, this, this barrel is not going to last as long as the 458. And the reason for that is very simple. The uh, Italian uh, physicist named Venturi discovered many years ago that the narrowing, the, the, the constrictor of one pipe diameter front to another, a smaller one, meant a reduction in pressure. So in other words, this case may develop over 62,000 foot pound, uh, I should say pounds per square inch of internal pressure, but that pressure is reduced when it's uh, sped down that smaller tube. So it becomes less efficient. The pressure that's built up in that case has to be built up and up and up in order to maintain any viable pressure in the barrel to establish the velocity that's necessary. And there's kind of a conundrum there because what happens, what happens is that the cartridge itself becomes less efficient. And, and this, this can be seen in so many cases. If you take a, uh, recently I did a video where I talked about the 3030 and the 32 Winchester Special. They both have identical cases except that one has a uh, 32 or I should say 8 mm basically speaking it's an 8 millimeter bore and the other one is a 30 caliber bore 308 diameter bullet well the 32 is capable of over 100 feet per second greater velocity because it can utilize more powder more efficiently and it has less of that venturi effect so more of the more of the pressure is being used down the bore in order to expel that bullet so, and in the same way, you can take, see if I have a good example here. This is a, uh, the 7 millimeter Mauser case has been used just as the, just as the 3006 case has been used as a model for a beginning for so many other different cartridges. So has the, um, so has the uh, 7 millimeter by 57 Mauser case. So let's take a, let's take an example 
if I can get my glasses on here. Um, we'll take a hundred grain, we, uh, we'll compare bullets of the same weight. <clears throat> in the 7 by 57 Mauser, uh, we've got a hundred grain jacketed bullet. This is in Lee's manual. This, he, lists, he lists the data which is provided to him by the various powder manufacturers. That's where he gets his data from. So this is all laboratory data that's derived from the powder manufacturers. A hundred grain bullet we have here uh, can be sped out of the 7x57 Mauser with a very low pressure of 51,443 pounds per square inch at a velocity of 3299 with one foot shy of uh, 3300 feet per second. That's a pretty, that's a pretty fast bullet. Not a very, not a very good, uh, not a very good uh, bullet in terms of uh, you know sectional density or ballistic coefficient, but we're getting out at 3,300 feet per second with less than 52,000 pounds per square inch. Let's go to the six millimeter Remington, which is a seven by 57 case, neck down to six millimeter. It's only one meter, one millimeter smaller than the seven. In that case we have a hundred grain bullet, same weight bullet, being driven at 62,500 pounds per square inch. That's a lot, much, that, that's much, much, that's 10,000 pounds per square inch greater than the Mauser case. And yet, instead of getting 3,300 feet per second, it's only getting 3,145. And that's because of that efficiency, or the lack thereof, I spoke of. So, whenever you, whenever you, and, and trust me, a six millimeter Remington is not going to last as long as a seven by fifty-seven Mauser, and they have the same size case. All things being equal, fire the equal number of times, or fired at the same rate, the seven by fifty-seven Mauser, which was designed as a military case, designed to be fired in sustained combat conditions will last longer than a, a high velocity, you know, super high velocity environment round or super high velocity hunting round, which is uh, taking it to the next level or several levels up. So, uh, think about what you really need. You know, I'll give you an example. I live here in New England where, you know, my environment hunting is largely restricted to patches, which, I mean, you know, 150 to 200 yards is, is about the norm. Uh, once in a while, I might possibly run into a, a pasture that's got, you know, 250, 300 yards before it gets to the other corner. Uh, but, you know, I can do very, very well with a 222 Remington without any trouble whatsoever. Most of my shots could be with a 22 Hornet, and I'd still, I'd still be able to get just as many, just as many crows or woodchucks. There isn't really any need for me to even have this. 22-250 here. I, I own this 22-250 because I simply enjoy shooting at 22-250 and it's very versatile and I have it for when I want to go out prairie dog shooting sometime and take it easy on the prairie dog town. You know, racking the bolt and, and getting excited shooting one pup after another is not is not going to spell a long barrel life. This They're not going away. They're not going to pack up and move out of town. Just take your time, have fun, but let your barrel cool between shots, and don't you know? Don't just sit there with a with a, a soup can full of ammo and just keep on devouring one shot after another as your barrel starts heating up, and you can start feeling it come through the wood in the stock. So that's that's key. Select select intelligently. Know what it is that you're buying from the very beginning, and you're going to save a lot of money. You know the raw materials that are involved in a smaller cartridge uh, all around are far more economical. Uh, you know, the more powder that you burn, the fewer shots you get. You get 250 shots out of a, can, a pound of powder with a 223. You get twice as many shots out of, out of that same pound of powder with a 22 Hornet. And it just, that's just the way it goes. If you are selecting a, a big game uh, cartridge, you know, understand the same, the same rules apply. You know, the person, who's, the, the person who's hunting east of the Mississippi is not going to have too many uh, opportunities for long-distance shots. 
And sure, your shots might be 350 yards, but that's not long and distant. That's within the capability of virtually all standard cartridges that have long barrel life expectancy. So you don't have to go. You don't have to go crazy, and you don't have to buy. And you don't have to think of you know buying super huge cases. Whenever I hear when I whenever I hear people tell me that. The 300 Winchester Magnum is the minimum for deer hunting. You know, I really have to laugh. That is absolutely absurdity. I've been hunting all my life, and I've been shooting all my life. I can guarantee you that that 300 Winchester Magnum is a ridiculous cartridge for anything that's less, less than an elk. Uh, it's, it's absolutely outrageously stupid. There's no reason to, to have a 30 caliber bullet flying along at uh, 3,000 feet per second to shoot a deer. You simply don't need to have that. Um, and you don't need to burn that kind of powder up. You know, that, that thing chews up a pound of powder like it's going out of style. I love the gun. It's a great elk gun, but I'm certainly not going to take it out deer hunting, and it's, it's absolutely unnecessary for any deer. So, you know, don't listen to all the baloney that you hear out there that's being professed by these wizards on, on the Internet who you have no idea who they are. You know, they have on the side here, they have... They have their, their master sergeant or something like that, or they're an admiral, and, you know, they, they, they list all the guns that they own, and, you know, they, it could be a 17-year-old kid that's never, never even owned a gun. You have no idea who's out there. These people are all just simply, you know, faces on the Internet. They have no, they have no identity whatsoever, so don't listen to them. You can, you can listen to me because I'm here and, you know, I've got the guns, I've got the experience and I can talk about this stuff and I'm fluent in the subjects. So, you know, you can, you can trust a person who can uh, talk in that way. There are others out there too that, that are able to, you know, expand on these various things. But be careful of a person's credentials. So barrel wear is a very significant thing you can greatly reduce a barrel uh, a barrel's life and fractionalize it you can you can take a barrel which has a, a an expected life of 2 or 3000 rounds and you can reduce it to less than 1000 rounds if you abuse it so so that's all i have to say on that subject thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe tell all your friends about us and by the way benny's doing just great god bless